I'm just really so thrilled that everyone is here for uh, the most open-ended, mysterious kind of meeting that I've ever participated in organizing. The overall idea, of course, is to see if there are some ways that we might uh, develop more systematic means of keeping in touch, sharing information among people engaged in research related to sexuality around the world, defining research as broadly as possible, whether through academic institutions, NGOs, activist formations, the arts, other venues. Um, it's a daunting idea, and it would be very easy to say, as some periodically we did, that the idea of linking up so many people, sharing research, data, materials, teaching opportunities, and so forth, is so huge that it can't be done. So let's just throw up our hands and forget it. Um, but we didn't throw up our hands, uh, along with a dedicated advisory board. Um, we said, okay, we can't do everything, but let's at least do something. Let's, um, and let's, let's start it. Let's see what that something might be. So that's why we're hosting this meeting. We have no presupposition of the outcome. Um, and we don't have any agenda uh, of our own. It's genuinely open. Um, and we're looking forward to assessing together what we have, imagining what we'd like, uh, and hammering out how to get it. Homosexuality has never been illegal in China. And uh, early last year, um, it was delisted from the list of mental disorder um, from the Chinese Psychiatric Association. But we still have seen mixed um, signals coming from the government. Some activities were uh, stopped or, or banned or, or, or interrupted by the government, such as the Lesbian Cultural Festival last year and also the Lesbian and Gay Film Festival last year. It took place, but it was um, a stop, ordered to stop in the middle. In the third world countries, there is a, there is a separation between women's organizations and lesbian, lesbian organizations. So when you try to explain to them in a meeting about the importance of including lesbians, they immediately react because they, they don't feel secure about that, even, even though most of those women are lesbians. In the case of, at least Brazil and many parts of Latin America, the movements are very strong now, and academic work is developing in the universities. It's all influenced by U.S. culture. Being able to, not just for a one or two day conference, which is a very uh, ephemeral experience, but to be able to bring people from parts of the world to other parts of the world who are on that edge between activists and academics, who are in bo both worlds in some way, um, would be a very important concrete thing that, that clogs could help facilitate happening. I'm, I'm Deb Amory and I was uh, fortunately chosen to summarize all, everything that happened this morning. Um, the eight general goals that were identified include building comparative methods and opportunities to broaden the kind of comparative work um, that, for example, legal scholars are doing. Secondly, to make more information accessible, and that would include to help distribute materials, provide access to journals online, um, download papers, data reports, bibliographies, so just sort of the flow of information. Uh, thirdly, to provide descriptions of and inspirations for strategies of resistance. And this was linked to the goal of affecting transformation, to build something that will help make change on the ground on a local level. Fourth would be to foster more exchange and understanding among activists and academics. Fifth would be to foster more exchange among scholars from different places, exchanging syllabi, collaborating on research, co-teaching from afar or by trading places. And sixth would be simply to diminish isolation. And seventh was a recommendation do not create a new group, tie in, build on, learn from other movements and networks. And associated with that is to link to other movements for justice and other areas of study. And finally, to decentralize. There was a lot of discussion about the need for a decentralized um, network and approach uh, with perhaps, in one suggestion was two tiers, a public, and a public level that's accessible um, internationally and also and maintaining a level of confidentiality for security reasons for people to, per to participate, but also not to risk um, their safety. Immediately, I think what we can do is to have a um, number of volunteers who just collate 
existing online resources? I would love to, you know, if someone is studying something intensely and then they've come across some articles and say, well, I can't wait to share this with other people who are interested in this topic. I'm going to put it on the internet. Let's do that. Summarize this article within 50 words or something like that. And now we can put it on a database saying that this is summarized by so and so. So the person has an accountability, you know, that they're not misquoting the data or mi uh, misreading the data. And then um, class people can try to contact the original author and ask the person to. Uh, a proof of that or revise the sum summary. I would like to see something bigger that used the web. Mm -hmm. I mean, ideally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to just being a web mm -hmm. project. I think as, as vast and wonderful as this tool can be, um, uh, people's ability to access it will really determine its ultimate value over time. How do we move from a place of providing information to developing of development of skills, development of infrastructure, that I can that I can look at this network as a place of growth for me, not just a place to dump my article. I do think that the internet and electronic technologies, if you can if you can ensure access for people, has been the way that people have facilitated communication. It's, it, it is the way that these networks do work internationally, but also it facilitates local organizing too. Our charge is to say, these things exist, what doesn't exist? Yeah. What is it that we can do that's new and different? The two real concerns that were addressed and I think the most op optimistic way to look at it is that there are no answers, but there are ongoing concerns requiring innovative strategies are money and access. Everybody emphasized that the politics of naming was important and that flexibility was important depending on the political context for people involved. The question of language was discussed by every group. Six groups voted um, that multiple languages is a priority. That seemed to emerge pretty clearly. Um, a lot of this was discussed in terms of probably the first step would be establishing an international working group or a board who would be responsible for the project. Um, and they could work to su provide support to scholars and cultural workers who are not US-based to design the project and to sort of begin to implement it. Until the parameters of what this thing is are defined, we're going to continually have debates and conversations and discussions like this, which will get heated because everybody has their own agenda about what should go in this thing. And, and, and there, there have been, I think, many suggestions about the parameters made in many conversations all throughout the two days, right? I mean, this was, to, this was partly to bring it all up into the open and then have a longer conversation over six months or, or a longer period of time and then come back. It, it seems that we need to go where there's something, something that we do need to leave these two days of working with something set forward. The, the key proposal is that an international working group is formed, and that international working group uh, will be formed from, from members of this current discussion. Um, people who, who join the working group would then go back to their local sites and identify other potential members of their local uh, subcommittees within the working group. Um, those groups will then identify what they think of the pressing issues and somehow feed back into this um, non-site specific, it's still to be determined, um, working party. If this working group has a, a secretary, so to speak, to deal with sort of those logistical questions, it has a set of principles that we've agreed on. And then the last thing I think it needs is a charge. The ac access to architecture, access, language, governance, and nomenclature um, were the five areas that Deb actually articulated. And, and I think if those are the five charges that, that this group actually then takes upon itself to address um, and, and presents in the newsletter to the, to the general body that's sitting in this room and others who then want to join this group through CLAGS as the facilitator, then I think we have a next step.